When it comes to grocery stores, there's nothing quite like Trader Joe's. Thanks to its mix of clever marketing and proprietary food options, Trader Joe's has amassed a cult following that rival chains like Piggly Wiggly could only dream of having. But how much do you really know about the crunchiest supermarket on earth? Here's a look at the untold truth of Trader Joe's. What's in a name? Today, everyone knows the name Trader Joe's, but once upon a time, the store went by a completely different moniker. Trader Joe's founder Joe Colomb helped open a chain of small convenience stores called Pronto Markets and decided to buy them in 1958. It wasn't until 1967 that he decided to change the name to Trader Joe's. In 1979, the chain was bought out by the German grocery store chain Aldi Nord, but it wasn't until 1996 that the first Trader Joe's opened outside of California. Brand within a brand in 1972, Trader Joe's decided to start selling their own branded products, beginning with the simple Trader Joe's granola. It took off, and nowadays a whopping 90% of the chain's sales comes from in-house branded items. For the past eight years, Trader Joe's has even run a fan poll to determine everyone's favorite goodies, with Mandarin Orange Chicken dethroning cookie butter in 2016 to claim the crown. Not every branded item is quite as popular, though. In 2016, Trader Joe's was sued because it turned out their 5-ounce tuna cans only had a paltry 2.43 ounces of actual tuna in them, and the famous Two Buck Chuck wine? It's actually just a rebranded batch of the widely mocked Franzia wine in a box. So next time you're making fun of your less cultured drinking buddies because they don't shop at Trader Joe's, think again. Their name is a promise. If a product in their store is labeled with a Trader Joe's brand, it means more than you might think. In order to bear that name, a product has to do a lot more than taste good. Trader Joe's private label products are always free of artificial flavors, colors, preservatives, MSG, genetically modified ingredients, and artificial trans fats. That's the Trader Joe's promise. There's always a hidden mascot. Need something to keep the kids busy while you do your shopping? Send them on a hunt for the hidden lobster. Or monkey, or octopus, or sasquatch. Plastic lobsters were brought into the store as a fun way to decorate in 1976, and starting in 1983, every location had a plastic lobster hidden somewhere within the store. Since then, though, some locations have replaced the lobster with other animals and even given out lollipops to kids who managed to find it. Finally, children have something to do while their parents are grocery shopping. You can return anything. The idea of returning food seems pretty weird, but believe it or not, Trader Joe's has a no-questions-asked return policy. It doesn't matter if it's a half-eaten frozen dinner, a box of tea, or a can of Simpler Times lager that had a sip taken from it. Trader Joe's will happily take it back with no receipt required. If you do have a receipt, you'll usually get a cash refund. But if not, you'll still get a Trader Joe's gift card. Nice. They have a secret language. Ever wonder what all those ringing bells are? Well, it's actually a secret code used by employees to communicate since they don't have an intercom system. A former Trader Joe's employee told Thrillist, instead of asking for so-and-so to come to the front, one bell ring calls for one of us to come up and help the register. Response time is quicker. You get more people coming up. And when they do respond, those employees are likely to be friendly and happy. Why? Well, it boils down to corporate culture. Not only does Trader Joe's offer starting employees a healthy $13 per hour, they also provide benefits including paid sick leave and vision and dental insurance to any employee working 15 or more hours per week, so they might be ringing that bell just because they're enjoying their job so much. The parking lots are just fine. If hardcore Trader Joe's enthusiasts have one complaint, it's that the parking lots always seem tiny and full. Yeah, and I think that Trader Joe's is making their parking lots too small on purpose just so they seem more popular than they really are. <laughs> According to parking lot design expert Donald Shoup, though, the parking lots are actually completely sufficient. They only seem small because shoppers are used to stores providing way more space than needed. Small lots are part of Trader Joe's dedication to efficiency, which carries over to the way they set up their stores as well. Trader Joe's sells more than twice as much food per square foot as their rival Whole Foods. Whether it's parking lots or food, the same rule applies to everything at Trader Joe's. Quality over quantity. Thanks for watching. Click the mashed icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.